What's going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you a bring you an actually serious video, something that I normally do not do and really just something that I try to like stay away from because I mean it, you know, anybody that's been with the channel for a little while knows that I don't take much seriously. I like to joke about quite a few different things and there really isn't anything that I uh, take overly seriously to the point where I can't have fun with it. However, recent developments have been occurring with uh with regards to my videos that is something i would like to address and that is the people's reaction to my quote unquote salt as it were and uh before i get into any of this i just want to say please do not curse in the comment section of my videos that's something that i really just i mean i try to keep my videos as uh, kid friendly and as non I guess non vulgar as possible so please refrain from cursing in the comment section of my videos comments that do have curse words will be deleted from here on out I mean I've been kind of back and forth about whether or not I want to do this however I don't want to promote a toxic environment and that's really something that I just don't want to have happen at all it's something that i have been afford unfortunately been a part of with way back when i used to play competitive pokemon on showdown and wi-fi there was this uh website called nintendo plus which jolt and i and a bunch of other people were very into that was an incredibly toxic environment that just made pokemon not fun and that is something that i really don't want to have happen with this channel i mean i do these videos Every one of the token minorities do these videos because we enjoy Pokemon so much that we have enough fun with it to where we want to share that fun with you guys. And we want you to enjoy the fun that we are able to have. And so that's why any comments that have uh, ne that have uh, curse words, vulgar language, or overall negative insulting tones will be deleted because we don't want to have that happen. Now, for the actual content of this video... I'm going to discuss the, well, my saltiness that in recent times, it's kind of just been a joking point like, oh my gosh, Styx is getting salty again. I mean, Aura and I even came up with a name for my salty alter ego called Pretzel Sticks. And it was just kind of an ongoing joke that people laughed at, well, especially with Crushing Hammer and how triggered I get whenever I see that. However, in recent videos, it's kind of escalated a little bit to where it is something that I really felt the need to address and I wanted to let you guys really just give you guys insight into my into my saltiness and why it's there. I'm going to just go ahead and start with my competitive background. Um, I've been playing sports since I was very very little. I played basketball all the way up through high school and into college and I didn't even start playing Pokemon until my sophomore year, well competitively until my sophomore year of high school. So there was a very long time where the only competitive part of my life was through sports. And with sports, more often than not, the player with the better ability is going to win. There is not a whole lot of luck involved. And I mean, okay, I'm not saying there's no luck in sports because there 100% is, but the person with the greater ability, the greater preparation, all of that will more often than not come out victorious in sports. And so that's where my mindset originated. Pokemon, I just want to get out of the way and say, I love this game to death. It is a game that has allowed me to connect with so many great and awesome people. I've been able to develop friends like Jolt, Maddie Brolic, Aurabomb, just to name a few. There are many other people who I did not name. I just wanted to name those that I was closest to. But, I mean, it's a great community. It has allowed me to connect with people all over the world, so I love the game. However, there is a very, very huge aspect of luck involved with Pokemon. And that's just the nature of the beast. That's how it is. Every person that plays it deals with it. And so, for that, I apologize for my saltiness. I do know that I get a little bit overly salty sometimes when it comes to, uh, when it comes to Pokemon in general. But I just wanted to let you know where my competitive mindset comes from. It's from a mindset that if you prepare better and if you are the better player, you will win. That is not the case with Pokemon. Uh, actually, it's not. Well, it's, it is mostly the case with Pokemon. However, there are cases 
where that doesn't happen. So Pokemon does have the ability to have the person that's the better player, better prepared, just lose because luck is involved and that is where my saltiness really truly originates from Pokemon and though I do get overly salty so I apologize for that. Now one of the things that was mentioned in the comments was that oh your opponent just used a better deck. Okay first of all they're they're rarely okay in some cases yes there is a better deck. In the Aerodactyl video, the match they were talking about was the Aerodactyl Volcanion matchup. And yes, you know what? Aerodactyl is not a particularly competitive deck. Yes, people did bring it to St. Louis Regionals, but to be fair, I can bring whatever deck I want to a Regionals and then it'll be like, oh, so-and-so brought this deck. It must be competitive. Just because it's, it was taken to a serious competition does not necessarily mean it is competitive. Is it a, is it a cool deck that has the chance to win and has some good matchups? Oh yeah. However, overall, it's just not overly competitive. So my opponent brought a Volcanion deck, which Volcanion has had success at expanded standard levels of play. This deck was a largely non-competitive deck. So yes, my opponent did technically bring a better deck. However, better deck is a very, I, I guess is a very subjective term. In the early stages of this standard format, three decks really did reign supreme. There was Mega Mewtwo, there was Mega Scizor, and there was Volcanion. Yeah, I know I'm missing a couple. I think there was Mega Gardevoir as well, and then Eveltal ended up coming out as the overall BDIF. But in the early stages, it was those three decks that really just kind of uh, defined the metagame. And between those, it was really a rock, paper, scissors match. So there was no like, oh, he just brought the better deck. No, it really just came down to matchup. So losing or having a matchup where you just lose quite a bit does not mean your opponent just has a better deck. A lot of times it comes down to the matchup. Now, I don't always post like super competitive decks. I do a bunch of different decks, whether that be competitive decks or really fun decks like the Meowth Bats one that I did way back when. I don't always go into games being like, oh, I have the best deck. I'm going to use the best deck that I can. No, I use decks that are fun. Sometimes I use competitive decks if they're relevant, but other times I just like to use fun, unique ideas. That way you guys just get a different taste of different games, different styles of play, all of that. Additionally, the big problem was that Volcanion really just kind of destroyed me. I don't post I don't post wins all the time because I hate people that do that. I think that it is a misrepresentation of certain decks and certain matchups. So I try to make it a point to not always post wins. Are the vast majority of the matches in my videos wins? Yes. But the reason that I do that is because I want to show off the deck doing what it does and each deck doing what it does. And in many, many cases, that is because I'm able to get my deck going and my opponent isn't able to disrupt me, which puts me in a position to win. So that's why a lot of my videos are wins. However, I do post losses as well so that you don't just think, oh, this deck is amazing because every time Styx played it, he won. No, I record quite a few different matches with each deck. Well, depending on the deck. Sometimes I get lucky and the matches that I record are all video worthy, so I just go with that. However, there are many times, particularly with less competitive decks, that I record matches and then I just have to scrap them because it is me just getting absolutely destroyed to where I, I really just get nothing going and my opponent just steamrolls me. So that is not something that I want to record because it won't be entertaining and not something I want to put in a video because you guys won't enjoy it, you'll just be like, well, Sticks just got absolutely steamrolled. And yes, I do know that, and I am aware that I put videos of me steamrolling my opponents in my videos. However, that's because I want to show off what the deck does. And if I'm able to set up in some cases, yes, I will steamroll my opponents. However, I do put in losses because I want to give you guys a more realistic sense of some different decks and some different matchups. Now, another thing with my losses were the people like, oh, you're being so childish for making excuses. I wasn't making excuses. I was explaining why I lost. 
in okay so the match in question again was the aerodactyl versus volcanion matchup if we go and look at the aerodactyl deck that i literally was just sitting on and i decided to click away i'm not sure why let's go ahead and find it there it is so let's go ahead and look at aerodactyl now if we look at the cards we're like okay aerodactyl hits for 120 glade hits for 130 but apart from that uh, without getting like damage on Tauros to be able to rage or Mad Bull GX or having damage already on the board with Dunsparce, this deck cannot take big one hit knockouts. Having a fresh Pokemon on our opponent's side that's fully loaded up is very, very, very difficult for us to deal with. And that's why Aerodactyl is not necessarily a particularly competitive deck because it struggles with that type of matchup. What Volcanion does is it builds up big attackers and a lot of times they are fresh attackers because they get loaded up on the bench and then they just steamroll through you. So what I was doing was I was explaining, okay, this is why the matchup is bad for Aerodactyl and this is why I'm getting absolutely crushed. So uh, that was me simply trying to educate people that don't necessarily know the metagame on certain matchups. Just be like, okay, yeah, Aerodactyl does not beat Volcanion. It is a very poor matchup for Aerodactyl. I'm simply trying to explain why I lost so that you guys understand certain situations. And then there are instances where it's not simply a matchup, it is me just misplaying. Take the Incineroar GX video, for example. I lost to a Zygarde deck because I had a misplay. I posted that loss because I was able to show off the deck, but it did come down to a misplay, and I acknowledge that. And you know what? Sometimes, yes, it does come down to luck. The Aerodactyl matchup, I honestly, I mean, yes, I was unlucky with half my attackers, pro with half my main attackers prized, but I think I still would have lost that anyway, just because of the nature of the matchup. In the Incineroar versus uh, Zygarde matchup, I misplayed, I admitted that I misplayed, and my opponent took advantage of that and was able to win as a result of it. But sometimes, matchups do come down to luck. However, in times that I'm losing and I'm trying to explain why I'm losing, I'm not making excuses. I'm trying to tell you guys, okay, I'm losing, here is why I'm losing. And yes, I do know that my saltiness does sometimes begin to well up and it makes it sound like I'm just saying, well, he's, he's getting everything he could possibly want right now. And yes, I apologize, I get salty. I know I get salty, I'm aware of that. You guys know that I get salty as well. I do apologize for my saltiness. However, I, I have been working on making that stay down and I've been trying to explain why I lose. And yes, the saltiness might make it seem like I'm, you, I'm making excuses. However, if you look at the content of what I'm saying and not how I'm saying it, you'll realize that, oh, he's actually just making, he's actually just explaining why he's in a losing situation, not, oh, he's just making excuses. So you can look at it as me making excuses, or you can choose to look at it as the way that I'm trying to make it seem, and that is I'm trying to uh, let you guys know what's going on with certain in certain matchups, with certain decks, etc., etc. Oh, and by the way, people that say, oh, you always complain about your luck. Ask anybody that knows me. My luck is historically hilariously bad i mean i have a picture of a match that i was in that illustrated my luck perfectly it was a dark cry dark cry mirror matchup in which in legacy in which there were 30 flips in that matchup the overall breakdown was exactly 50 50 heads and tails there were 15 heads flipped 15 tails my opponent flipped 10 heads and four tails i flipped five heads and 11 tails so again, my luck is very bad. However, if you actually watch the videos and like take a tally mark, you will notice that when I get lucky, I do point it out and I acknowledge my luck. So I'm not just pointing out my bad luck and never pointing out my good luck. Finally, the last thing I want to address is the quote unquote rage quit that I did in, uh, that I did in the Aerodactyl Volcanion matchup. And then also that I do with Aura. First of all, Anything that I do with Aura should not be taking ser taken seriously. Any matches between Aura and I in which I rage quit should not be taken into account because he and I just mess around. The Aerodactyl Volcanion matchup, I quit because I saw I was in a situation where I literally could not win. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I can't win. I'm going to concede this match. Saves time for myself and my opponent. 
if you actually watch the TCG and know anything about it, you will know that players at top levels of competition, heck, not even necessarily top levels, players all the time will scoop up a match if they see, well, I'm in an unwinnable position. On TCGO, people do that all the time. However, on TCGO in real life, if you are put in an unwinnable situation or your opponent is, the majority of the time they will scoop because why not waste, why waste time on a lost match? I might as well go to another match where I have a chance to win. So it's not rage quitting. It is saying I'm in an unwinnable situation. So I might as well just not waste time for myself or my opponent. And let's just go on to the next game. Players at every single level will quit a match if it's unwinnable. And then in TCGO, we have the luxury of being like, well, forfeiting a versus match is no skin off my back. But the more I play the TCG and the more I have watched top level players play, there's no point in playing out a match which you can't win. In quitting in a situation where uh, you are in an unwinnable or you're in an unwinnable game state is something that top level players do all the time and so I was just being like you know what couldn't win so I'm just gonna forfeit so guys I know that I was kind of all over the place in this video I tried to stick as close to a script that I laid out as possible but even you know me you know I go on random tangents so I apologize for that but I hope that this video gave you a little bit of an insight into my quote-unquote saltiness and why it is the way it is so yeah thanks thank you guys for watching you don't need to do all that like comment subscribe stuff this was just very much a video of me explaining why i'm salty debunking those people that call that are calling me childish and immature and saying that i rage quit it, is, it was me just trying to explain all of that and then also try to let you guys know that i am going to take a zero tolerance policy and stance towards toxic comments in the comment section i mean yes I mean, I've seen people get in arguments before, but from here on out, if there is a comment that is confrontational, that is uh, vulgar, that could lead to a big argument, I, I will delete that because I do not want that to be uh, something that happens on this channel and it will be addressed immediately. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, all that normal stuff. This is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.